What's going on? We already have some people here. 61 people. Is this working? Do we have a sound? Is this thing on? I see myself. Okay. We're back. We're back live. Um, let's see if uh, this thing is working. Yes, people are saying it, it's working. Uh, so here's the deal. We're going to talk about some current events first. Then uh, if we can get more than 100 people, then Ronne Falk will come on and talk about the electric euros. He told me that he'll only show up if there's over 100 people. He wa he's not going to waste his time with less. So there's, there's that. And then after we chat with Ronne Falk, then we will uh, talk about setup. So we have these setup documents. It's a Excel sheet or many, many spreadsheets, actually. Uh, quick reference setup guide and that kind of stuff. So we're going to talk about that because I updated them today uh, with all the updates over the past months. And uh, they're available now. So if you bought the book, you can download them from the shop. If you bought the online course, you can download them. If you bought just the documents for 10 euros, you can download them also. Okay. Um, so until we reach over 100 viewers, I guess we can do Q&A. Uh, but first, let's get Lefty in here because he had something to complain about again. Let's see. What's up, Lefty? You heard you had a shitty day yesterday at the track. And who told you that? And that Max's car, that you was, Max was 1.7 seconds faster than you. See, I got all the load on about you. How? We didn't even have timing. He said he has 1.7 seconds faster than you. Well, how can he know that when we don't have timing? Let, let's tell no everybody how you, broke your, how you broke your throttle servo, then dented your pipe all up, and then you made her more miserable. I didn't actually. I had work to do. Yeah. So I go to the track. My I see my pipe is broken. I'm like, oh shit, my pipe's broken. Uh, so I yeah, I'll just see if it works. Like the stinger was a bit uh, torn, and so then I drove and I I flipped and I hit a rock and actually completely broke the pipe. Then so I was like, lucky I didn't change the pipe. Then I changed the pipe and then my throttle servo broke. But yeah, I drove Max's car and and I don't think it was very good. He said, he, I, don't, I don't know. He even said that the rear end of the car wasn't that good. So he, he still needs to improve it. I just wanted him to drive my car so he could see how it could feel, like how much better it could feel, right? But then my throttle server broke, so he never got a chance. And there were no lap times, so I don't know what the hell. You know what? About. You're not even the vice champion of Finland. You're the vice vice champion because you didn't even come second last year. And Max is going to beat you again this weekend, even though I don't think you're going to race. Because Do we have to raining. get into that? Or... Man, you need to get some better. I'm, I'm going to answer That's some questions need. first. All right. I'll do your questions. I'll go back in the background. You be the star. Oh, before we go, hey, I got a plug. Episode number 191 is dropping tomorrow, and it's two giveaways on tomorrow's podcast. And it's you better pay attention to the YouTube tomorrow when it drops. Two giveaways. Two products are given away from a new sponsor tomorrow. Go away, Lefty. Go and spam go, all your go and spam all your channels so we can get over a hundred people here. So Ronnie Falk. There you go, up, JQ. Okay. And why you don't go, you Justin. share a link with Ronnie Falk also? Hey, Mr. Secretary. Okay, see you. That's enough for Lefty. Uh Lefty. I know you're in the background there. Share link with Ronne Falk. Okay. We're already at 82. We might get enough people. Okay. So I'm going to read out some Instagram questions to start off. Okay. And uh, then also 
post questions in the chat. And of course, super chats. If you post super chats, definitely I'll see them, you know, and I'll answer. Okay. Uh, I see a question here in chat. Is there an electric version of the Mayako coming? Yes, actually, we have an electric Mayako buggy already. We were at the Euros with it just now, a week ago. But you have to be a member to be able to buy it because it's a prototype. So it's not finished. Uh, we made a small batch of prototypes. Members can buy those and provide feedback and be a part of developing the actual final product. And then next year, we'll have a production e-buggy that anyone can buy. Another question, do you have to change the Conrod after breaking in a Nitro engine? No. Uh, these days, you don't need to do that. I think, what did... I can't remember anymore what Reds recommended, but it wasn't even that much, not that many liters that, that they recommended always replacing the Conrod. But I rarely do that. I replace bearings more than conrods, to be honest. When I start, actually, there's a video coming up tomorrow on my YouTube channel, which is a sort of highlight reel of uh, that online course meeting we had a few weeks ago. And in that video, there's a section where we listen to an engine to hear how we can know if the front bearing is bad or the, if the rear bearing is bad, because you can hear that. So we play some audio and we listen to those. So check out that uh, live meeting two video that's dropping tomorrow. Hey, Joseph, I'm from the UK and my son races TLR. How's it going? Well, it's going better than for you because you're racing a TLR. I am assuming uh, in eight scale. Uh, Shit, I should have used some kind of disclaimer. Now I'll get another cease and desist. Okay, well, well, it's live. I can't fix it now. I said it. Ever tried Torsen diffs? What's your opinion on them? Yeah, in the past we used to run those. Not so much anymore. I'm not entirely sure why, though. They were good back then. So the idea is that you can run them very light. So off power, a lot of steering, for example, if you run it in the front, but then on power, it sort of locks up uh, as it starts working and then drives the tires together. So, yeah. So the idea is that it acts like uh, very thin oil off power and then thick oil on power. Um, is the access to set up documents forever after buying the book? I got the book right after it came out. You know what? I can't even remember. I honestly can't remember. It's not a big deal. You probably still have access. Maybe one day you'll, you'll lose access and you're going to have to spend some money. But for now, everyone's that bought something <laughs> has access. Jesus, we got some, uh, Super chats. So, Hellbilly FPV asks, "What can I do for fail safe if hair ties aren't strong enough?" You have to go for quality hair ties, hair bands, and you have to put more than one on. So you put a bunch of them on, and you figure out how many you need so that they are strong enough. That's the way you do it. Okay, I'm going to check some of the Instagram questions. So I posted a story asking for questions on Instagram. And uh, here are a few. So someone asks, Ibis or old school break-in? Well, what I have to say about that is go and watch my goddamn video about engine break-in on this YouTube channel. Then you don't have to ask. Go watch that video. Uh, then, actually, let's bring Lefty on for this one. Well, first, there's a question here. What was the biggest challenge in setup at the Euros? Well, let's talk to, let's remember this question. And uh, when we have 10 more viewers and Ronnefal can come on, then we'll answer that. 
Thanks for the Euro coverage. Neat, clean picture, good angle, short and sweet. More of this where possible. I mean, there was no coverage. I just had a phone and I wanted to film uh, Ronne Falk, so I just uploaded them uh, for everyone to see. So lefty. Unmute yourself. What's up? Um, I have a question here. Mm. Um, was it my question? What? what? Was it my question? No. What is the best and the worst thing about RC racing? My question for me? No, this is a question we got. So what's the best thing and worst thing? What should we start with? Should we start with the worst thing? Yeah, the worst thing is I don't get to race. So I don't have a track. No, uh, the, the worst, worst thing, thing about RC racing is how fucking small it is. Uh, Seriously. Yeah, it's too small. maybe. I, I would say that the worst thing about RC racing is how we race. The, the race format and how how long well, that, it takes that and all, how little we get to drive. That all the goes race into, format. That all goes yeah. into. It's no, just too that's small. the worst thing. The race worst format thing. and the best thing. Uh, I do enjoy the the ability to interact and be with even to interact with the professionals on a level that you can't really interact with them at any other events, like any full-scale events. And also I enjoy meeting the people. And because once you like, once you have that little connection with somebody like, Hey, I like RC. It's like, you're, you're going to be friends no matter what, like, you know? And I mean, obviously I'll let you hate each other, but you, the relationships that I've gotten through RC are, are just amazing. So I, I, I like that part of it. Yeah. I would say that the best thing is traveling to a good, RC race, that too. The atmosphere there and all that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's really special. Do you get that? I like, I still get it. I still get like butterflies. It feels like you know, like we haven't walked into a strip club for the first time, and you get all nervous. <laughs> you know. So, oh yeah, my god! You get that? I still get that when I go to like a track or a big race that I haven't been to. So, yeah, I'm 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 excited to get to races. Yeah, I met. Yeah, great. man. So we got some super chats here. Yeah, thank you, RC Mumus, the French streamer, RC yes. streamer, yeah, news channel. He always Merci gives me super beaucoup. chats too. Appreciate all of it. Kevin Mendes, sup, Joe? Keep making this RC industry elevating you and Lefty. Okay, that what's up, Kevin? Weird, no, he's a big mean. he's a big supporter <laughs> from up. Uh, no, I talk to Kevin a lot. He's uh, he's from Connecticut, and he always like he's he always drops a super chat on one of my lives. Uh, he always drops yeah. a super chat on your lives. Good dude. So he's a visual learner. Is invisible speed speeding video? Well, I mean, invisible speed is a book and an online course, which is videos. So you can buy the course then and watch the videos if you're a visual learner. And the production car Nitro is ready and it has been available all of this year and. E buggy will be next year. So thank you, Kevin. It's better check out that uh, Mayako Nitro buggy. Okay, DR seventy says it's from Rhode Island. Sorry, but that's RC madness right there. Ah, uh, we got a few more questions, Joseph. Oh, we got one from her. Let's see. Thanks for the Euro cover. Okay. I have some Instagram questions. Okay, go through them. Um, someone asked about the scrap your crap buggies. I still have some uh, Durango scrap your crap buggies. One day we have to do something with that. How much better must the next RCGP coverage event become to be a top level event? I mean, it needs to be a lot better, but you know what? Here's a bit of a rant. How can there be only 26 or 23 or something like that, entries for the RC2 class in Europe. It was the same thing the first year of RCGP, right? Um, Philippines was like 80 races or something. I can't remember, something around that. Kind of sort of normal for that region. Then European races, 
first one had like 25 and the second one like 50 or something like that, 60. What the hell? And then we go to America and it's full. But you know what? 20. You know what? And this it's... season again, first race in America, full. Now we go to Europe, 25 drivers or something. Like what the hell? If you want something like this to succeed and if you want to see some positive change, better coverage, uh, new racing formats, if you want something like this to happen, you have to fucking support it. It's not going to exist if there's only 20 people there. Everyone always complains about this and that, like, oh, the racing formats are boring. Oh, the, um, there's not enough track time. There's not enough value for money. The coverage isn't good, this and that. And then when there's someone, an organization trying to do something, don't support it. So, I mean, what do you really want? But I have to say that for the people that will attend Italy, because I'll be there, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff for them as well, like clinics and whatever, you know. For, it's like for the people that do attend these races, they'll get track time, but they'll also get some extra benefits as well. So, yeah, it's going to be I'm worth going for sure. To. Yep. Uh, we have a, another super chat here. Bomb Racing asks, how would you advance shock development in 1.8? Uh, yes, this is an area where I think there is a lot of room for improvement. I think the reason no one has done it is because it takes a lot of time and effort and uh, money to do. And it, it the return just isn't there. So no one's bothered doing it. But it's something that I definitely would want to do in the future. And yes... The difference between our shocks and uh, full-size racing shocks is massive, but there are still uh, ideas and concepts that can be adapted and that, that can work. You don't have to go from where we are to the most advanced shock uh, for full scale immediately. You know, you can make some steps towards it or in that direction first. I think those are possible. I think fully adjustable shocks like we have in full scale is maybe a bit too demanding and a bit too ambitious but i do believe that we can improve the shocks we have now but i'm not going to tell you how <laughs> i'm just going to do it uh, are some of the improvements of mayako going to come to the jq black edition no so the JQ line of cars have been discontinued. So now it's all focused on Mayako. The JQ cars that still exist will be sold. And uh, people who still have JQ cars can run them and still have spare parts. So that's not uh, something that will happen. Uh, yeah, someone someone bought Novorossi, didn't they? I, I can't remember what happened there if the Novorossi... Brand will oh so it's gonna be Nova called Nova. Yeah, they so they released some pictures of coming back. Yeah, they released some pictures of glow plugs today on Facebook. Yeah, uh, Dennis asks. He says he's new to racing. What makes the Mayako different to other brands? Uh, well, there are two ways to look at this. So first, Mayako is a brand. Well, the difference between Mayako and the other brands. Uh, on a on that level is the idea, the concept of Mayako. So the idea is to really find a group of people who share this uh, love of RC racing, and it can be on different levels. So racing, trying to improve your skill set, uh, trying to reach the top, or trying to be as good as possible uh, in your area or region of racing or it can be something to do with on the mechanical or engineering side you know interested in setup or design or working on cars whatever it is if you join Mayako if you become a member you can be a part of that inner circle behind the scenes uh, figuring out prototype parts and developing the cars that we have and being a part of that being able to buy buy parts that uh, normally no one has access to it unless you are a paid professional driver or the designer of that brand. Uh, you can get even complete cars, which are just prototypes. So you can truly be a part of the process of creating a product or and improving a product. 
and not only that, then there's a you know community of like-minded individuals on Discord, live chat, video chat, uh, ask questions in text chat. So whatever your issue is, you can always get uh, a solution or various different solutions from different people. So it's really, uh, Mayako as a concept is really about building a community more so than just another car or getting a discount and buying a car. It's more, more building a sort of solid community of people. That's the main difference between the Mayako brand and uh, others. And then if you look at just the car right now, the main difference would be the adjustability. So first of all, the base is very solid and safe. And uh, there's a lot of helpful information regarding what the different setup options do and uh, what how you can adjust it. But then the adjustability itself, like diff heights and um, f- uh, fine adjustments on the shock positions or upper links versus upper arms, these kind of things, things which don't really exist on other cars. So you have all the normal setup options plus some more. So that's what I would say is the difference. Also, I just wanted to add to that. Uh, I see other companies are now using Discord. So uh, I see WRC is using it. Scott and- Walk actually, it was his idea because uh, we needed a way to communicate and create this sort of community somehow. So I asked Scott if he had some ideas, like, what do you think? How should we do it? And he researched it and came back and said he thinks Discord uh, would be the best. And it has proved to be really, really good. And now some other companies have started using it too. Yeah, I love it. I, I was. It took me a Cheers. long time to get used to it, but I love it. Hey, did you invite Ronne Falk? I did send him an invite to his email. You sent the link? Okay. I'll... Yeah. So um, what other RC disciplines could help with my 1.8 buggy driving skills? I mean, all of them, really. Uh, 10 scale off-road helps. I think uh, on-road also helps, like touring car. Bigani always says that's good for corner speed. I drove some touring car just now. Yeah, it's good fun. I mean, you do learn to appreciate how to drive your car around the track so you get a fast lap time, you know? how to enter corners, maintain corner speed, all of that. So any RC that you can do, really, 10 scale or 8 scale, will help. Okay, we have another super chat. Kevin again. Is this the same guy? Doubling up. Uh, What's up, Lefty? I just want to say, Joseph, I tried the roll center jacking effect. I raised my roll center on my Techno RC truck and I instantly felt uh, way more connected. Thank you so much. Learned a lot. Yes, the jacking video is on the YouTube channel. It's just one of the videos from the online course. So check those out. On this YouTube channel, there's a few videos from the course. And if you like those, then maybe you should check out the course. Kevin Clark, just don't be too opinionated in Discord or be a crybaby. Uh, I don't know what that's related to. Ah, he's the guy who used to be in the Discord. He used to be on the Mayako. With oh, us. Did, he's one person that left? Remember yeah. he left, came back, left again. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah it has nothing to do with uh, being too opinionated or being a crybaby or whatever, yeah. I don't know. There are a lot of opinionated people on there. I think setups between nitro and electric are fairly similar for most people. And now even the weights of the cars are quite similar. My opinion on Pico engines, um, Pico have always been a bit more temperamental than your average OS. But when I ran them back in early 2000s, they were really good. They were actually really good. Still more temperamental, but like the the power band and the feel and everything, it was good. Very good. When trying to get faster, what is 
best to focus on first consistency then speed or speed then consistency i think that definitely consistency first and then speed that's the way most rc races try doing it the other way and never achieve it so consistency first that's that's where you start and no i don't think that uh, nitro rc is dying it's not gonna die no oh. it, in fact it, it's if you look What's happening is I know why it seems like that because e buggy e truggy are growing. That's what's happening. So, but if you look at like regions, so if you go to a region like the southeast where Dave has his races in America, like that area, they always get super high e buggy. Why are you smiling? They always get super e buggy. Are you just... <laughs> they always get super high e buggy entries and. They always get nitro entries, a lot of nitro entries, but the e-buggy entries always outnumber them. And then if you go to like a DNC silver state, nitro is is really high. Like it's the biggest classes. So I don't think that it's dying. I just think that the people that are getting into RC are getting into e-buggy. And there's a lot of people just getting into e-buggy and e-truggy that is growing. Yeah. Uh, I have a question on Instagram here. Why is Lefty the greatest? Well, I think that the thing is that the last word was just uh, left off the slogan for some reason. It's actually Lefty the Great Disappointment. That's the full name. But it was left off, so then it, it just became Lefty the Great. But it's supposed to be Lefty the Great. That's a lie. That's a lie. No, it's not. That's the honest to God truth. No, it's not. We both know that. No, it's not. It's not. It was Lefty the yeah, Great and... White. Because my last name's White, like Shark. The Great. Oh my God. Then the white rope. somebody else put no, the Great White. Yeah, like Shark. And then somebody put disappointment on it. Should KPI be tried in 10 scale and what angle does Mayako have? Uh, yeah, it should be tried in 10 scale, and I'm not telling you. Huh. When will we see Mayako buggies at Revelation Hobby Shop? I don't know. Buggies are only sold direct right now, so only on Mayako.com. PR racing cars. Yes, I saw they made a bunch of improvements also since I drove them but back then they were actually pretty decent yeah i had some hey good success with those i thought for my my so hara, hara is threatening to run 10 scale again and he has like i think it was hara and he had all these different pictures of companies that he might go to and pr was one of them so they still run they still exist yeah still exist um so we are on over 100 people, so I don't know if I could be on in a moment. But before that, do we have anything to talk about, current events or something? Any news? For me? You want news from me? Yeah, or anything. Do we oh, have something? Um, uh, no, not really. Recent. Uh, just... I think there's no real, uh, real big racing going on, like a big, big race going on this week. A lot of regional big races going on. Like I think the NCTS, like the Hank Perry, it's like a race that's been around for 32 years. I think t is off to like Cheyenne Classic. I think these guys actually have a break this week. You have Worlds warm up next weekend. So you'll be leaving soon for Red of All. When do you go to Red of All? Next week. So Wednesday. Unfortunately, there will be no coverage. Hey, maybe you'll get some video with your camera. That'd be great. No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, when do we see Mayako with Red's engines and JQ behind the controls? I mean, probably never. I've been there, done that. I've run Red's before. Nio. Ciao, Pepe e Lefty. How every one of us can help to improve our hobby, to have more people, especially the younger, at our races. Are you all working in this direction? Well, 
uh, eternal pro- uh, project of getting more people involved. I think that it's not it, it's a problem that requires many different solutions. It's not just one thing. Like I think I strongly believe that mm. even your podcast, No Name RC podcast, media, uh, pictures, videos, all of this information about RC and the races and people in RC is helpful. Uh, something like RCGP, which is sort of the supposed to be the pinnacle of the sport, and the professional drivers and teams and uh, spectacular media. That's a part of it. Then the local racing uh, with better racing formats requiring less time of people to be at the track, uh, affordable products that are good entry-level products that you can race, um, the better racing formats I mentioned there, easy access to information so you can find tracks and hobby shops and other people that race. All of these different things uh, are linked and they all have to happen. Like you can't just do one of the things. Uh, let's say that RCGP, along with other events, were super successful, and and uh, there was media content that access a ton of new people, and a lot of new people get uh, interested in RC. Well, if there's not sort of clear products for them to get, like buy these things and start racing. If, if it's not easy for them, a lot of those people will drop off like, ah, it's too complicated to figure out what to buy. Okay. If there was something like a simple way to get into RC, like back in the day we had short course trucks, suddenly a lot of people bought them and started racing RC. Like if we had some simple product, something easy for people to buy and get into RC, next problem is how we race. It takes too much time, just sit around at the track, you know, a lot of people quit because of that. So there are so many different things that need to happen on a local level, on a sort of industry-sized level. So, yeah, it's a tough one. But it's one that in the coming years I hope to work towards uh, solving and also put pressure on Efra and everyone else to yes. do something instead that? of just talk. Can I add to that? Yeah. Um, I agree with everything you just said. But we also have to make this attractive to young people. You know what I mean? And yeah. we're not because we we glorify these 40 plus racers who keep saying this. If this industry wasn't if it wasn't for us, this industry would be dead. Yes, they have to dispose. I, I hate when people say young kids don't have disposable income. Yes, maybe their parents do. Or yes, they have to have a parent. They're with them to help them out. Or maybe you should mentor one of these young racers if you see some potential and want to help them. The issue is RC is competing with so much other cooler shit right now. You got gaming, you got, and then let's not, you got sports, girls, you know, tra- you know, real life. We got to compete with all of that. And if I'm a young racer in RC, there's not a lot of money in this. You know what I mean? If you make it to that top, percentile and then if you you can make it at top five or even at top three that are making extremely uh, a good bit of money in this industry and get all the glory then great but it's just no pathway to becoming a professional and and there's no real draw as a young racer to get more involved in this and and go for yeah, that like sustained positive change it has to really happen at a bigger level like well-functioning federations that actually promote our hobby and then that trickling down to national federations local clubs you know that that's the way other sports and hobbies also work you know the bigger federations they raise money and share information and uh, share funds and that's how you that's how you not just maintain but grow as yeah, and, or hobby. and we're not even That's marketing. How it has to work. We're not even marketing to families or kids or anything like that. Not when I do. Yeah. Anything. Someone also mentioned schools, so I think in some countries there have been some uh, sort of a small dabbling in in this kind of stuff. But yeah, RC would be a very good thing to to include in schools on some level somehow. Like even if it's just. Um, 
sort of uh, in elementary school when we used to go somewhere with a class, visit something, do something. RC would be a perfect hobby to experience. Or even if it's not the whole class, but promote two schools so that children and, and their parents know that there's a local club and there's an open day at the track. Come and try RC as a hobby. RC you know, clubs things in like school. this. Simple. Yeah, or, or RC clubs in school. Uh, I mean, in the past, at least in Finland, many... RC clubs would uh, use school gymnasiums to build tracks for the weekend, for example. And that's where their sort of indoor facility would be. Uh, less, less of that happening now than before. But anyway, the point being that you need to be sort of active to promote the hobby and get more people involved. And that's uh, lacking in in many places. So I just wanted to say something real quick because this person said probably the worst part of the hobby is that it's really expensive, but I love it. So I was talking to my buddy today who's his kids into motocross and just starting out and he's getting a rebuild on his engine. And the guy was like, Hey, I can put ceramic bearings in there for $600. So I, if for $600, you can buy a whole new engine. You know what I mean? And pipe in RC. Yeah. So RC is expensive, but it's relative to other, to other, other sports, other hobbies, or whatever. So okay, so I just want to address this. Too. Here. Address this. What? RC is doing really well in the UK, especially ten skill offered. The club scheme is great. Lots of families and kids getting involved. Yes, because you guys have figured out one thing that Americans are now starting to figure out. Astro and carpet is awesome, and it helps people get into RC. And you can have more tracks, and they don't have to be permanent. Just like they are in the UK, and also, and I think BRCA also, is actually active in exactly. as a federation in the UK, and you have clubs and all that type of stuff in in the UK. We were just talking about this on this week's on this week's today's yes tomorrow's podcast actually. So yeah, yep. okay. So we have Ron Falk here. So let's talk a bit about uh, what he's been up to. Bring him on here. Here we go. What's up? Left is all quiet. Hey, yeah, okay. I was reading comments. Okay, so uh, Lefty, uh, what's uh, Joe Rogan's uh, guy Jamie. called? Jamie, Jamie, pull up that video. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hold on. Let's go. I'll get it. Don't worry. What was that question we had? We had a guy who asked a question about... Uh, something what was the hardest thing i think what was the hardest thing about setting up your car for this track because everyone's been wondering why all the cars look so loose and yeah the track was super loose it was like an ice rink with uh ruts in it so it was loose but then the car would sort of catch these sharp edges also so what was the biggest challenge uh, while we watch uh Killich? actually before Let's give uh, David some time to think about the answer for this, the challenge of setting up the car, and rewind to the beginning. And let's watch what happened here at the start. Kilich causing all kinds of mayhem after Berton actually took him out. The, the other starts were actually pretty good. I was surprised. But this one was just mayhem. He can't he can't really help like sending his car to the left there. He got hit like right when he was <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's just right when there. something happens, you just go full punch. Yeah. You know he was gonna cut the track there too. I know for sure Bayer was happy there. I, he was next to me on the driver's stand and he was like not very happy of Killage. Yeah. Yeah, so um setting up your car for this kind of surface. Loose but edgy um yeah i mean no like when we went through the race um i knew the track was gonna be loose i didn't know how edgy it would be um it ended up being quite edgy as the track uh, kind of broke apart uh during the race but um i mean like many of you saw like the speed was there from the start in practice so i think i have a very good um experience um 
on how to to kind of you know get the car right from the start on a on a loose surface obviously you need to make like the roll bars a bit softer um i came with the diff set up a little bit softer than than what i would probably normally run on a on a medium grippy track um shock package i had a bit more pack in the chocks to create a bit more grip uh, i ran five by one fives all around uh, that's usually something that wouldn't work as good on let's say like a medium to high by track so already there like just getting the roll bars right uh shocks and dips is huge on on a track which is slippery then yeah then like you can play with the with the roll center a bit as well um but for the most part what i did was to make sure i had uh i mean i had a pretty good um view on what i would need in, in terms of roll bars shocks and dips and and i mean throughout practice we didn't didn't really change much at all um just played with a couple of details here and there to make it a bit more easy as the track was a bit edgy um uh, and that i couldn't know before going to the race uh, and also the, the the ruts kind of developed throughout the race so we had to go uh, and try a couple of things um during the race as well How about your race engineer with uh, brilliant suggestions for setup changes? What did you think about that? Yeah, I remember you had like three, three decent inputs on Friday, and I think uh, they all worked good. So you were happy. You were satisfied. I was very happy. I had a large uh, draft beer at the Hoodie, <laughs> a luxury beer at the Hoodie Arena. After that, I think, I think the things we changed was we moved the front shock out on the arm to support the car a bit more when you were driving into corners. That was one of them. Uh, the shock location? Yeah. But I, out I, end, I, ended up, then... I ended up moving it back into the, the, to the number two. Oh, you did? Yeah. God damn it. I think it then... was the link. Get a little bit shorter link in the rear. That yeah. was one. Um, it was moving the 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 knuckle in the front to the middle position instead of all the way down. Yep. And then I don't remember remember the third third one. Okay, so the the rear link on the hub a slightly shorter position. The reason for that was that uh, there's well two things. So you have a bit more camber gain, so that hopefully the rear wouldn't catch. Uh, sharp edges as much and also when you have a shorter link and you want to stop turning and square up and go straight the car does that a bit better so that's that's why that change worked and then the second thing you said was on the steering knuckle you can raise or lower it so raising that knuckle from the lowest position to the middle means you have a bit less side bite less initial grip so again <coughs> a change to stop the front end from catching those uh, edges on the track. Yep. So that, that was the thinking behind it. Yeah, because if, if something during practice, the, uh, the car was, you know, the, the car was quick. Everything was quick all weekend. But uh, yeah, I, I, I did struggle a bit with like the front end biting and, and kind of breaking the rear and loose. Uh, so that's why we, we did a couple of them, them changes. Yeah. And uh, grandpa setup versus Rone Falk setup. I, I think maybe the biggest difference was that I was running the KPI 1 and you were running KPI 0, right? Yeah. So the KPI 1 just, it's more the pillow ball style. The initial steering is much lower. It's just easier to drive for me, you know? Yeah. If I get a bit nervous out there or shaky, the car feels easy and forgiving. But David wants that response. So uh, he ran the KPI zero. Yeah, if something like now after the race is finished, if, if something I would have liked to try the caster two in the, instead of the caster one, just to see if I could get something like in between. I didn't want to go KPI one because I I really think on a track like this for me, it wouldn't steer enough. Um, but yeah, the caster two would probably help it just uh, be a little easier in those edgy edginess uh, that was on the track. Yeah. 
I have a question. Was this track loose like this in 2019, in the 2019 Worlds? Yeah, it was loose. Really? Like, it, wow, that must have been a handful to drive those two-wheel drive cars on this. Yeah, I mean, probably slightly, maybe slightly more grip, but uh, for sure it was not much, much more. It was uh, pretty similar, I'd say. And the layout, for li is, what was different from the 2019 Worlds? In the I mean, all the features on the track has been the same since they put it down, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. They've you know, just changed the, uh, the piping, uh, the lanes a bit. Uh, I, I didn't even look on how the track was at the, the warm up uh, a couple of weeks ago here. But uh, Joseph, after the race, like when we were on the way back or at the hotel or something, he, he saw a picture and like the whole the whole left the right side of the track was the same. Right. And then they changed a bit here in the uh, on the left in the chicane and stuff. But yeah, the jumps have been the same uh, and all the other like kind of off campus sections, uh, just depending on how they they uh, put the pipes down. Like all the right side was even the same at the uh, at the four wheel drive worlds. The two wheel drive was a little different than four wheel drive uh, class was. I mean, just about the same as the right side is here now. So it's been there for a while for sure. I know that they can't um, they can't water due to like corrosion in the. I mean, in the in the lights and stuff and like the big doors. They stop like working because of the the humidity in there, so that's mm. why they you know can't water. Uh, so it's very very dry, and uh, I do think that they need to kind of whatever, just bring the dirt out, make it wet, and kind of rebuild the track. I mean the 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 facility and everything is like top. I mean top notch. It's like a F one compound. You know, it's it's insane really, and. Uh, the track could could be could be really needing a, a refreshment let's say yeah i mean this is indoors they have everything there i don't see why like this they could change the track design every race they have like america which they should i think they should have at this point but uh hmm, interesting I mean, too much work they can't really get the surface good they don't have that kind of dirt like ocrc or something where you can just do it in a day and it's done I think it takes a lot more work to pack it down. Yeah, and then they got all like those concrete sections and jumps and all that stuff. Yeah. For the tires, I think everyone was pretty much on the same tire. So, yeah, so I Hara, think there was a Hara, hot race. Yeah. That's but you did look like Bad. you did look like you was catching them at this point. And yeah, I mean, I mean, really, what kind of set the tone of my weekend was already in Q1, I'd say. Like electric is very, very different from, from Nitro as you don't have the semi-final, um, you go straight into A main. So qualifying is way, way more important than, than it is on, on my Nitro class. So I think, you know, coming like from Friday being very, very quick and the top seed, like, you know, I put some expectations on myself and and like the weekend and and wrestles that i mean i knew i could do really well this weekend as we had a you know great great speed in, on friday already and uh i think yeah i had like two mistakes there in q1 um ended up 12 i think then q2 i i was on a tq pace um and that was like after i think half yeah, two and a half minutes into the run or something, like five five laps or so. Um, Kanas made a mistake in front of me and he kind of pulled in right in front of me on the straight. And then like in the end of the straight, we got really close and I turned in too early on the pipe and, and rolled the car. And then when I when I rolled it there, um, Bruno was marshalling there and he was like, I was on a good, you know, good run. So he was watching the screen behind him instead of watching the track. So I lost like another five seconds due to him not paying to, paying attention to the to the corner he was marshalling you know and that kind of sucked so like if it would have been like of course i wouldn't have i mean i shouldn't have crashed from the first place but it could have been like a fifth or sixth place instead of like a 15th uh due to him not watching the track so that really sucked because that meant i had like a 12 and a 15 in the first two and with three out of five counting i had some pressure just you know of course i 
I knew the speed was good to to even win the race, so I I didn't want to, you know, end up outside of the A main. So I I, I had to put like two at least decent runs in to to be able to release some pressure for the last one. And and uh, I kept the car on the wheels Q3 Q4, but I kept the car on the wheels, but was quite a bit slower than when I was like you know pushing. So. Um, I think I dropped like at least half a second in pace, um, higher than, than what I would normally run. So I went to running like high 29s instead of low. And, um, uh, you know, I got a third and a fifth in the third and fourth run. Um, so that's kind of secured my spot into the A main. Um, but that's not really, I mean, I wouldn't be happy just being in the A main. I was, you know, I wanted to fight for the top spots and in the last, last quality, I, I just went for it because I had to start further, further up with, uh, the grid if I wanted to have a chance at the moment. If it was just gonna be what I had in terms of wrestles, it would have been like eighth on the grid. So I went for it in the last one. I I was on a really good pace again. TQ run uh, going on, and then I had one mistake in the chicane. I just cut the pipe a little bit and. Uh, cost me like four seconds or so uh, ended up third in that run so even with that you know four second mistake i i did this the same time i did in q3 q4 without the mistake so that i mean i went like four seconds faster in the run just you know pushing like i should instead of driving uh on like safety let's say so two thirds and a fifth uh put me uh fifth on the grid obviously we see that it was possible to do it because canas came from six to win uh, but uh, yeah, you need a lot of more, a lot more luck uh, when you're in the mid mid pack like that. And uh, yeah, the finals didn't really go my way. And um, I, I had I had a chance to get a third in the first one. I had a mistake with just two three laps to go, and Davide got him uh, got by me, got the fourth. And then in the last one, I should have been third. But um, we made a tire change and. Uh, I think I just had a lot more spin. It didn't have as much traction, so I was using more uh, using more uh, energy out of the battery. And yeah, like you saw in the video just before, uh, I uh, ran out of gas with the straight. Did you use shorties? Yeah, I ran shorties. Okay, I have a question for you. Um, two, actually, how do you, as a professional? Who wants to win? Because I learned that about you a long time ago. Like, it doesn't matter. You want to win. And I think most of these guys are like that. How do you regroup as a professional and get back to racing? Again, because you're going to be at the World's Warm Up here shortly. And uh, how much has Canas improved since, like, RCGP in 2019? Uh, I mean, obviously, he has improved uh, a lot. Um they have good uh, good opportunities down there in Spain with great tracks and and good weather, so they can drive all year uh, round basically. Um, so he's put in the hours, and and it really shows. Uh, like I said in my report, you know, it was just a matter of time because he's been so quick. Um, so yeah, good great job to him on his first uh, European uh, Championship title. Um, but yeah, like. You know, you can't win every race you go to. You just have, sometimes you have to just make the best out of it. I didn't really feel like that's what I did this weekend either. I could have been better than seventh, even though, I mean, even if I wouldn't have won, I think like a podium was definitely reachable. And, um, you know, at times like that, you know, just need to kind of go back and reflect on, on what could have been done differently. Um, and in terms of like preparation is where I feel like I've been lacking a little bit here lately. I've had a lot of stuff on my hands and um, it's taken away time from like me practicing in between races. Um, also like the weather here uh, has just got like decent enough to where the track has started to open. So yeah, I think just the wheel time in between races is what it all came down to just, you know, being used to drive a lot. Um, and like especially keeping keeping the practice up in between races in, is important and uh yeah i've i've kind of made a, a better plan here on on how to spend my time in between races and uh it should be uh should be you know a lot better 
in the in the coming races i think i might add that this is what your third race with the ebug too like yeah third race because yeah. you didn't really practice at before dnc with the e-buggy and you, i don't think you've practiced since then so yeah. yeah it it's it's gonna come i think like people think that because you guys are pro drivers that you can just drive anything right away and some of you can or you can drive a shoebox right away but we've seen that it actually takes time for you guys i think you guys need to get more comfortable with the cars because you have to be more in tune with it does that make sense no, no for sure i mean that's the thing like uh, me adrian and joseph were talking in the car on the way back to the hotel and then like you know dnc i was basically fighting fighting for the uh, top spots in all three classes and you know we spent three weeks before the race at the track mostly every day and we put in the time you know needed to be ready when when the race came around and and we were ready and i think yeah just the lack of practice in between races for me is where i've been uh, uh suffering a bit uh the last couple of events um so yeah that's something that i have to improve and uh of course i will do that i have an idea for that actually your uh track time between the races you need to do some testing with the uh, mayako and that ties into something we're doing in with the invisible speed course so before you go and we move on lefty check the comments if you have questions for david ask those in the comments and lefty will uh find them but i want to show something for you uh to you so hold the comments for now lefty okay and uh check this out so hopefully i'm uh sharing a window here this is the homework we are doing now so with the invisible speed online course it's not just videos that you watch it's also it's also live videos and we've had a one week session of uh, five live videos where we talked about these basic setup options and other stuff. I'm releasing highlights of those on, on the YouTube channel now also. But you can still join and join us for our homework. So what we're doing is we are making all of these changes independently on our own and uh, noting down what we notice. So for example, for ride height, we try just 27, 27, front and rear, same ride height. Then we lower it, 23, 23. And then we go very high, 31, 31. Stagger it to the front, 24, 27. Or stagger it to the rear, 29, 26. Uh, so we just try to learn to understand what ride height does, how it affects the handling. And uh, down here, we have this uh, test log. So each, each of us that do it we note down where we are what we are trying and what we feel and then we summarize it here on the feedback sheet so everyone that tries something will uh, write down their conclusions here so we'll have all the drivers who do this uh, what car they have and then their feelings of what their sort of conclusion of each different uh, setup change so what we are doing now is we are testing ride height, droop, camber, front toe out, shock oil, shock spring, and anti-roll bar. And this is what we're doing for the next two months, actually. So two months of testing to really figure out uh, how these different basic setup options affect handling. So David, I think you, you should join this. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> then there's no I way think... no way for you to cheat on this. You really will get that track time and you will find out your best setup for your Moyako because you've gone through everything and you've kept notes. And uh, they are also public notes for everyone in the uh, Invisible Speed course. So this, this is something you have access to if you buy the full online course. Yeah. So how does that sound? Sounds like um, I got some work to do. Sounds like exactly. you, your brain, 
You sounds like you went like me when you saw that spreadsheet. Blank. That's what it sounds like. JQ <laughs> and his spreadsheets. Oh, this is very good. It's a it Google good. document. It's e good. Everyone can upload, I mean, update their own page and then put the conclusion here. And that's how it goes. Yeah. So there we go. That's what's happening the next two months in the uh, Invisible Speed course. Some questions? Yeah, questions for David, and then we move on. Do you believe the tires make that much difference and have that much influence on performance? Yeah, I think it makes a huge difference. Um, so that's like one of the third, first thing that you need to figure out when when you go to track or practice session or whatever. Maybe you have a, diff a couple of different tires with you and. Uh, yeah, make sure to find the right uh, thread and compound before you start playing uh, uh, too much with the with the setup. Because if you don't have the right tie, it's always going to be hard uh, uh, getting the, the speed out of the car if you don't have the traction between the tire and the ground. JQ, Edward SB, the Mayako looks amazing. You should drop off a bill car at Revelation so people can get excited about it. The people who... Uh want one can get one they don't need a built car at revelation dave loxley do you think the mayako being so different having more setup options than the hp has made it more difficult to learn no i don't think so um i think we have a good uh, kind of view of of the setup window we are uh, going to be inside and and uh from there you don't you don't really change, uh, you know, a lot. I would say it's more about details. Like, yeah, it can be like 0.5 toe, you know, here and there, uh, shock package. Like I said, pistons, uh, like more of the major stuff. Um, but but yeah, we have in terms of roll sensor and stuff. I've been running very similar on all the tracks I've been to. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of kind of learning what the changes. Uh, that are new for me on this car, uh, what they do on, on, in, in different conditions and, and, uh, occasions, you know, so like when I go, come to a race and I, I need something to, uh, oh, out of the car, I, I, oh, then I know what, what, what kind of change I need to do to get that feeling. What's the biggest difference between these two platforms for you so far? Um, I think if something, uh, the Mayako is, is, um, it's easier to drive. Uh, it has a, le a little bit less uh, rotation mid corner, but like overall, it's very well balanced. Uh, I'd say. So like, I've been looking to get a bit more rotation out of the car uh, at the couple of events I've been to so far. But I feel like when we have found that, uh, the car is still you know easier. It's not as uh, aggressive in the front end, especially. Okay. Uh, Mar Marco Paradiso, David, what electronics were you racing? Still Performo? No. Corsa, Corsa Tech. Tech. Yeah. MX304. I, I had some good, good news about that yesterday. Uh, so. Oh, can you say it now? No, it will be, uh, there will be something in June, some news in June. I'll get back to your question, MX304. Uh, let's get David while we have him here. But I, I I was just talking to Nick, so I'll get back to your question. David, what feel are you usually trying to reach with the car? More like an aggressive or balanced turn a lot or not that much? I think I can. I, I always like to have uh, a lot of steering uh, because uh, in that way, like my driving style is... I'm pretty smooth on the on the steering wheel, so like I don't always use like all of the travel that that you have on the steering wheel. So I kind of, you know, there's a balance for me between steering and, and throttle and brake input. Like I I kind of you know get the steering going with the steering wheel, and then I might control it with the amount of throttle input I give. You know, so I feel like like most of the guys that probably try, would try my car, they would probably say that 
it has a lot of steering and be pretty aggressive. But for me, like if I pick someone's car up, uh, let's say I just pick Joseph's car up, I, I'm probably going to say it's like pushy because like I, I like a lot of initial initial steer um, response. Like Joseph said, like he was running KPI one in hoodie and I was running the KPI zero just to get that uh, turning into the corner that, that I like to have. Nobody wants to drive your cars, JQ. Nobody wants to drive your car in particular. Uh, far more people should because it's easy to drive. That's what you say. That's that, you that, say. that's like I, I was standing there beside the track, yeah, watching the C main when when Joseph was driving, and and uh, me and Elliot was standing there on the side, and, and Elliot is like, uh, he, he was like, you know, the car looks pretty good, but he, he's not pushing it. <laughs> it looks very. That's why you look like a DNC. Very good on the track, but yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, he's not pushing at all. He's like a he grandpa. That he is pushing. That's, that's, a, that's what, what Max and they, they, they always say, like, I, I'm the grandma. Yeah. You know what? The, the best store. way for you to drive, JQ, is with a bear in your hand and one-handed. Then you just let things go. You, you, you actually better. Yeah. Uh, Dakri Man, that's my boy. Super chat. What was your first RC? What was my first RC? What yeah. Like? Ever. My race? Like, the first... Race no, your, your first real RC car. Uh, the first car was probably like a Kyosho Mini C. That's where I started. Um, so yeah, I drove those for a couple of years, like during winter time here, and then like after two years, I think I I got into the eight scale nitro uh, buggy class. Sweet. And Ricky. like first, yeah, from like oh. From 03 to 2004, end of 2014, I was running Kyosho car. So like 11 years with Kyosho. And from like 2009, I was like an international driver for Kyosho. I didn't realize you had been so long with Kyosho. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Uh, Rick Hayes, David, any opinion on the upcoming HP two-wheel drive buggy? Did you have any input in the design before you left HP? Yeah, I mean, we spent like all the time I was on HP. I, I had the prototype, like different versions of it. So, yeah, I've been very much involved in that. And uh, I think uh, the final product that wasn't released before I left uh, is something that is going to be, uh, you know, very competitive. It should be, it should be a good car. Good stuff. There was like, there was not much left after. I think the... When I left HP, there was I still didn't have the final um, the final version of the car with a diff and everything, uh, so I didn't get to drive that. I just got to drive like the last kind of prototype that we had, which used uh, AE diff and stuff. So I, I never got to try the diff uh, before I left. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be it's gonna be good. Um, Mr. G Chamberlain, David, shorty versus normal battery size. Is it weight versus power? Yeah, if you ask me after A3, I would probably say like a big pack. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, shorty is still, I mean, it's it's more reactive for sure. Um, the car is lighter, obviously, it's probably like a 150 grams or so lighter, uh, so it's making a huge difference on that on the feeling, but uh. Uh, if you're like on a big, big open track with bumps and stuff, like pretty much like the DNC at the DNC, I was running a big pack because there I thought that the car was handling better through the through the bumps with the with the heavier car. All right, um, Marcus, I do not know how to say your last name. Progressive versus Linear Springs. I haven't tried the Progressive yet. I only ran the the Linear ones. Mainly the black Mayako spring. Still All right, so me. RC Mumis, Mumus, sorry, he sent us another, sent you another super chat. Thank you, sir. He says, "Hi, David. What was the problem in the last final at the Hoodie Arena? Out of power, battery pack died. Yeah, last lap. Uh, too much okay. send it. Yeah, too much send it. Uh, we got the pulsinator in there. He says you're amazing. We know that." Yes, we need. Yes, he says we need an American too. Watch. Yeah, hey, I hey, guess. I have an idea. What? 
So before we let David go, let's let's do that hot laps, even even mm-hmm. though it's a, a non MRC podcast. Oh, you're, you're, you're stealing my hot. You have some ideas. You're stealing my hot laps. Yes, well, I do. So David, the idea is that uh, we we say a word or something, a person or a brand or something, and you have to just say the the first thing that comes to mind. You can use three words to do it. Oh, wow. So like when yesterday we recorded and. Uh, Lefty said, uh, David Ronefuck, and I had to say three words. I said, focus is worlds, right? Because it's kind of relevant to what's going on. Like, okay, that's the focus. So, so you know, just something that comes to mind when we say uh, something, right? Yep. You ready? I go first. Jace, wait, wait, wait. I have a good one. I have a good one. Okay. Jay Smoker. <laughs> the ridiculous one. That's too easy. That's too easy. That's too easy. Davide Angaro. Um, uh, <laughs> Got you. Right off the bat. <laughs> Got you right off the bat. Well, I mean, yeah. there's many things. <laughs> All right, we'll come back to that. You can focus on that one. Uh, well, can I, can I give my answer for that one? Sure, go ahead. Most ridiculous hairstyle. Yeah, I was just going to say the same. <laughs> I was just about to say the same. <laughs> How did Nick... Nick, Back, Nick cursed, backwards he, mullet. <laughs> Nick said he walks like this because he can't see in front of his hair. Because he has yeah. to look yeah. like that. that you was know, so funny. Uh, funny thing, at the, at the Euros just now, Finland had uh, two tables. Uh, that fin- other Finnish driver didn't show up. He actually forgot about the race. I called him. I'm like, hey, what the hell? Why aren't you here? He said, I am. Uh, like, I'm racing. I said, well, yeah, not at the Euros. He said, oh, shit, that race was now. I forgot about that. So he didn't show up. So the pit space was kind of cramped. So I actually pitted next to Ongaro uh, for the whole whole event. So his dad and him. So, yeah, they were they were nice. By the way, backwards mullet, definitely. Pista di merda. I don't get that hairstyle. I don't understand. It must be an Italian thing. So Yeah, it must be. I saw some dumb uh, video on somewhere, some reel or something of Italian kids, and they had that hairstyle. So then I'm like, aha, it's not just him. It's All all right, so I'm going to give you somebody. uh, World's warm-up. Um, uh, I'll win it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that type of talk. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Joseph. One more. Let's go a couple more. A race engineer. Oh, God. Who is this? <laughs> Your race is engineer. It? Who is it? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, pineapple uh, then. He just Pineapple answered. He said, "Who is it?" That was his response. That's three yeah. words. <laughs> uh, what else? Left you um, got one. RCGP Italy. Where is the entries? That's not what I thought she was gonna say. But um, yeah, that's a good one. Good okay, one. I ha- I have the last one. Okay. The Testaments. Oh my Ooh. God. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, that was the answer. Oh, <laughs> I didn't not... get it. <laughs> that was good. I like I, that. I'll give my answer. My favorite family. What? <laughs> uh, hey, Super Chats uh, get David to answer also. Um, someone posted a super sticker. That's, That's Dakri Man. No, you could he's have supposed, used he's, this opportunity. He's already gave us super chats. He always gives super chats. Good dude, right there. All right, let's a couple more questions, and then David's gonna go because it's getting late, right, David? Uh, Later for Joseph, but yeah, yeah. I still have to talk sleep. about the, those uh, setup documents here. So he doesn't sleep, David. Considering a life in another country like Spain or America to get more quality practice time because of better weather attracts the competition to reach your next level? No. Um, but like scheduling like regular trips 
uh, there like during winter time, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. The car looked very fast from uh, Todo Que Lo. Okay, Todo Que. No, I gotta say this. Todo Lo Que Es De Coches RSC. Okay, I got it right. <laughs> I got that right, but I can't get English right. Imagine that. David, the car looked very fast in the Euro in the Euros and looks very reactive on the track. Where do you think you should approve the car for final development? I think it wasn't the car. Like I said, I think what kind of set the tone on my weekend was Q1, Q2, where I didn't, you know, get a good score in. So I had to get three out of three uh, to count for the main uh, to get, you know, even inside the A main. And, and which meant I couldn't really drive as relaxed in Q3, Q4 um, and just went a little slower than needed to start further up the grid. So I think that pretty much was was it. You know, I I, I really think that... I mean, I, I wouldn't say I, but the, the speed was definitely there to win. Uh, it would have been fun to start uh, further up front to see what we could have done. Okay. Tony Bullet, he's in our Discord. What's up, Tony? In the NNRC Discord. He says he wants some feedback on the seismic tires, the compounds, and when you like them, what type of tracks, I guess. Well, any kind of like multi surface track, um, or if, if you have like a, you know, track with with a bunch of with a bunch of like astroturf or wood or any carpet or or things like that. The uh, synthetic compound from Six Mic is working really well. Uh, also, if you have like an oiled prep track, uh, it's yeah. The syn I mean, synthetic compound from Six Mic is what you need uh, if you want to go fast because at some times it can be up to like five tenths or even close to a second quicker than anything else. So. Uh, the synthetic compound is definitely a bullseye for six mic. Uh, they really, you know, um, did well on that when, on that stuff. And then tire like thread wise, uh, magma is obviously the quickest tire they have. I think um, I do like the design of the scratch. Uh, it's it's basically a magma side with some bigger pins in the center for longer wear. For longer longer mains maybe and uh i think yeah i drove them in in denmark at that race in the final and i really liked them but yeah the synthetic compound when you can use uh that one um yeah you're you're gonna have great grip on on tracks like that on the dirt dirt compound side uh, that they have i think they are they're very competitive as well um pretty much like any i mean the hot race stuff uh i think it's it's not as big of a difference on, on that on that kind of surface where you need to run like a dirt compound or like a standard compound from like hot trace or anything. But when you can use that synthetic compound, you're really going to have an upper hand on the rest. I suppose these will be the tires that everybody uses at the UK run because it's an oil track. Uh, yeah. What what diff, what diff weight diff fluid oils were you using at the Euros? I ran 10,000 front and center and five in the rear. All right. I'm not sure what he means by this, but Nikos asks, light versus heavy trigger on the radio. I guess this, the stiffness of the spring on the trigger. Um, Maybe. And I think, yeah, I just have mine in the standard setting. Um, so maybe a bit softer than, than some others would, have, would like it to be. Steering is also... Um, it's a little bit softer than standard. I always make them make it a little softer, but uh, yeah. Sweet, sweet, cool. So next week, uh, world's warm up, right? Yeah, yeah. it's next week. So, uh, oh yeah, that's gonna be exciting. I have. Has anyone seen an entry list? I was uh, I was talking to a Swedish guy who said he was gonna. Um, put uh, the entry in for the race and then at the time it was like 48 entries and that was like tonight. Okay. Well, I know Tessman's supposed to be going and I think Fenn might be going over there. Okay. Yeah, so. they're not on the list, but I mean, you you kind of signed up on the uh, the Spanish side, so I don't think any, I mean, even if it was kind of hard to, to understand how to do it. Yeah. Kevin Smith wants to know, Who's better in golf, you or Danny S? <laughs> I'm better than Danny S. 
Okay, Maybe. that's all the questions we have time for because now we need to talk about uh, downloadable documents. Real quick, I wanted to uh, answer MX304's question uh, about TZO tires. I was talking to Nick today. They're still working on the website, but it should uh, it should be happen. Get, that should be going up soon, and then you guys will be able to order some. Uh, we got some giveaways coming with TZO up on the podcast, sir. Coming up over the next few weeks as well. So uh, as soon as I know, I'll let you guys know. Nick Hernandez. Yeah. Hernandez. Okay. All right. There we go. Thanks All right. Lot, now, can I leave now too? Because I'm yeah. going to go yeah. sleep when this starts. You start talking about you, this. You guys can leave if you want. I'm going to go through this uh, awesome spreadsheet here. No, get my purse. See you later. See Bye, you everybody. Later, Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Those fools are out. Someone's outside. I'm not a fool, Hold you up. idiot. Some guys are doing drug deals outside my office. Well, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, and you just and you just pricked on them. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, hopefully people can see this spreadsheet. Amazing. You get this if you... Uh, by the book or the online course, or if you're a Mayako member, or I don't know how, but there are many different ways to get this. Here is like a quick reference thing. These are so hard to do, but there's all kinds of disclaimers here explaining stuff. Uh, so what type of track is it? And then what is the change? And is it recommended to make this change or not recommended? Or you can't really say in a simple way like this. And then we go through all the different setup options for that. So, okay, this is a sort of very basic guide. But then this is really the best page, best tab in this spreadsheet. It's fast versus versus easy. So this is a concept that I sort of developed to try and understand and more so try to explain how cars work to people because... Mostly people just want to know, hey, what does this change do? Or how do I get this? But it's hard to give straight answers to this because it depends on so many different variables. What's the track like? How do you drive the car? All, all of this. So I try to explain the difference between fast and easy or more initial grip versus more overall grip. So here goes. Uh, first of all, a bit of a disclaimer. When we say fast and easy, I mean that fast, fast means that the car is naturally fast. It wants to carry corner speed. It's responsive. But if your skills aren't high enough, you will go slower. The car is fast, but your lap time will be slower. So easy will actually be faster for a lot of us mortals, right? Ronne Falco will probably be faster with a faster setting. But even he has to compromise, right? He can't set everything to the fast setting on his car. He needs to pick and choose. So to understand the difference between fast and easy, fast really means that there's a lot of initial grip in the car. The car is responsive. It means that the car has a more geometric stiffness. So do you remember that jacking video from my YouTube channel? That kind of stiffness. The links and the arms resist roll and transfer load immediately. And then easy is the opposite. So where there's less geometric resistance. So the, so the car relies more on the shocks for support. So it drives softer around the track and rolls more and gives the driver more time to respond to changes. And then here are the different setup options. And if you add more anti-squat, the car will be faster. If you reduce, easier. So we scroll down and we continue initial grip, twitchy versus overall grip, smooth. And uh, more of the same, but uh, these, especially these here after, after the initial changes that are the same, this isn't really a case of, okay, the car is fast this way, it's slower or easier that way. No, it's just a difference in uh, initial grip or overall grip. 
So you can't directly say that, okay, I do this because I want the car naturally to be faster. No, this is a preference slash track condition uh, question. Do you want the car to be more firm, stiffer, or softer? Uh, the hardest thing when setting up a car is to understand what the car truly needs and to understand if it's a front-end problem or a rear-end problem or if it's not really a problem to understand if you want to make a change to the front or the rear end of the car. Now, they are connected by a chassis, but they are also separate. Front setup, rear setup, they need to match in some way for the car to handle in a balanced way. So that's a really... That's really the challenge in setting up a car. Something that's important to understand to know which direction you should go with your setup is that if we look at the green text here, so if your problem you are having with a car occurs after a peak of traction, so you have a lot of traction and then you lose it, so uh, or you have a lot of traction and you catch a bump and you flip over, uh, you drive into a corner and then suddenly the rear of the car loses grip and you sp oversteer. Something like that, for example. Then usually it's a problem of you having too much initial grip. So you want to reduce that to gain more overall grip. So you need to make your car more easy. Then on the other hand, if your problem occurs because your car is not responding enough and you're just sliding around you can't square up and accelerate. It's hard to place the car precisely on the track. Then you have a problem where you don't have enough initial grip. So you need to uh, make an adjustment which adds initial grip to the car, reduces overall grip. So just as an example, um, drive shaft angle. So when you move your rear hub forward, you're increasing the drive shaft angle. You have more initial grip less overall grip or diff heights that we can adjust on the Mayako higher diff more initial grip more responsive but less overall grip when you lower the diff you have more overall grip the car is softer drives through bumps better it's more forgiving arm height on the inside this is a very very good change even half a mil change in arm height makes a significant difference Higher arm on the inside, more initial grip, but maybe you lose the rear end in a corner, for example. So if you lower your rear arm on the inside, even just half a mil, maybe you gain that grip you need in a corner. You have less initial grip, but more overall grip. So your car will be easier to drive. So this one tab in this whole spreadsheet is very good. If you use this, and you learn to understand this, you can improve uh, your setup a lot on your own without asking questions, just uh, studying this and trying these changes for yourself. Um, need to get some RC drivers CAT scans and analyze what's going on in their brains. I think that would be interesting for many drivers that would probably show up blank <laughs> but yeah, it could be interesting to see, you know, a super talented top driver versus a good driver, but not as talented. Okay, uh, what else? We still got over 100 people in science mode. That's good. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, change order. This is something that was added after uh, we had some meetings in the Invisible Speed course run-through. So we had guests on, Carl McBride, David Ronnefalk, they came on and they we discussed the order at, in which they make changes when they go to a track. So um, on a low-grip track, high-grip track, bumpy track, edgy track, what order do you start making changes? How do you know where to begin? So this explains that process in the words of you know Kyle McBride and uh, Ronnefark. Then we have spring comparisons. So we have uh, tested, measured various different springs, and you find the results on this tab here. And then pistons, 
this is a pretty good one. This is one that you can then add stuff yourself, but different pistons, uh, hole amounts, sizes, then the, it calculates the area and also the piston hole circumference and the percentage relationship between the whole area and circumference. And why is this relevant? Because pistons with fewer bigger holes or more smaller holes act differently. They pack up differently. There's a good video on this subject on my YouTube channel. You can check it out for free. It's also, it's a video from the course. It explains how uh, if you have bigger, fewer bigger holes, you can see that uh, here, for example, you have about the same piston hole area as this piston that has eight holes, smaller holes, about the same or closer to the same uh, piston hole area, but there's a big difference in the piston hole circumference. So when you have more wall area, you have more pack because there's more friction in the oil. So this percentage will be smaller here. So a small percentage means you have more pack, a big percentage, less pack. So you can figure out uh, which direction to adjust your piston and learn to understand pistons better using this spreadsheet. And here below this, what I just explained is explained. So you can read through it and learn to understand your pistons better. Here are like quick reference guides for improving your setup. So you want more overall steering on, on a low grip track. What, should, what can you try? Or on a rough track, you want more overall steering. What could you try? And then next tab, solve an issue. So let's say your rear end spins out mid corner on a low grip track. So let's say, for example, well, at the hoodie arena, just not the Euros, you had a problem where the rear of your car would slide out uh, mid-corner. Track was low grip. What would you do? You can reduce rear camber, for example. Um, you can lower the rear arm on the inside. You can put a thinner rear roll bar on. Uh, all three of these things are things that I did, funnily enough. Uh, more rear toe-in. I didn't actually because the grip was consistent. So I didn't add rear toe-in. Take a rear defoil. Move rear shocks out on tower. You know, so it lists different things you can do in different conditions. Or maybe rear end feels soft when pushed on power in a corner. Fishtails on power when accelerating straight. So what do you do then? So then it gives examples. Then combinations, because sometimes just one change doesn't improve the car, but if you make multiple changes that compensate and complement each other, then it actually works. So for example, um, the first one is a pretty good one. So on an edgy, bumpy, rough track where the car catches bumps, car seems hard to drive. Well, raise the links on the front and rear towers one hole. Okay, so you're lowering your roll center, car will be more in the track. Raise front and rear axle heights, less side bite. Uh, if you go too fast and easy, look. Uh, where is it? Axle height. Higher axle height, more overall grip, less initial grip, easy. Raise front and rear axle heights. Then uh, raise complete rear link inside and out equal amount front also if possible. So you're raising the entire link now also. Then increase camber slightly. Run as thin roll bars as you can. Raise arms on inside for stiffness in roll if required. So you are making the car have less side bite and be softer. Uh, you are increasing camber slightly because now the car is rolling more. And then you are compensating here by raising the arm on the inside for stiffness because you are making it softer. So this is a combination of different changes that you make that com combined improve the car in this condition. But if you just did one of them, maybe it wouldn't work. 
See what I mean? So here, combination of changes you can make. Then we have a specific one for the Mayako buggy. So improve the Mayako combinations for Mayako. And then we still have uh, also for the JQ Black Edition, same thing. So there you go. This document is, uh, if you ever bought a book, downloaded these documents, you just go to your account and download it again, and it will be the updated one. Or if you have the online course, you just go in the course and it's there to one of the, uh, one of the sort of, what is it? One of the lessons is this file that you can download and it's the updated one. So there you go. Just a quick run through of that. Um, one day need to translate this into more languages also just like the book because uh, feedback has been good. People have enjoyed this. And if you were here earlier on when I showed the other uh, file, the homework file, we'll get even more uh, information there that we can then share in this downloadable document. Can't deny the support is the best any driver can get. With Bayako? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Is the book useful for 10 scale in particular two wheel drive? Yes, the book isn't focused on 10 scale two wheel drive, but the same concepts apply. So it will be beneficial for you if you run 10 scale two wheel drive also, definitely. What else? Uh, any questions, comments? Any last thoughts before I go? Should we check uh, world's warm up entry list? Where can we find that? It last requests. Is a simulator help helpful, uh, like VRC or something? I mean, maybe. I know Martin, what is it? Is it Martin Wolanka? He's been out for a while now. What's his name? Wolanka. Uh, he played a lot of VRC, world champion in VRC. Then he showed up at the eight scale off-road Euros and finished second. So maybe, <laughs> maybe there is some benefit. Keep this data recording. It will be a huge benefit compared to other brands. Yes, for sure. Uh, it's going to be beneficial specifically for Mayako, but also for other brands. Because, for example, in the Invisible Speed course, we have drivers who drive all, all different brands. Mugens, Technos, you name it. And uh, we are all trying uh, the same setup changes. And people with different cars are giving their thoughts and feedback on it. So, yeah, it's going to benefit all drivers regardless of brand. Will David run 10 scale in the near future? No, this year, no 10 scale, except 10 scale uh, touring car. He's doing the world championships in touring car. But next year, I believe, will be a 10 scale off road world's year. So then I think he'll run 10 scale off road also. We need a 30 second rant on something before sign off. Give the people what they want. I got just the thing for you. Okay. Let, okay. Let's do a quick, you know what? I need another beer. I need, you know what? Yes. 
This is what we're going to do. We're going to have a quick 30 second rant about vice champions. But before that, I have to go pee and get a beer. Cool? I'll be back. Okay, do we have the intermission screen? Let's see. Don't go anywhere. Let's see. Let's see how many people will be left in like two minutes when I come back for the rant. This is like Monty Python. People think it's over and then they leave, but it's actually not. Okay, I'm back. Ginger Joe time. Alcoholic ginger beer. Oak A. Um, yeah, quick rant. Someone requested a quick rant. I have to oblige. Let's see, actually, if I can find a blog that I wrote before so this has to do with the whole vice champion thing so x-ray are claiming that they they are vice champions i wasn't behind that I'm, I'm gonna try and look for this one blog i wrote that has to do with my rant If I can find it, so thequaregrain.com. Dude, it's insane how many blogs I wrote. It's actually insane to go back and look at this. Okay, actually, you know what I should do? I should share this shit and look for it with you. Uh. If my internet is good enough. Okay. Uh. There you go. This is the blog uh, I used to write every single day for over a year. Then I had a, a nervous breakdown and stopped. But there's an insane amount of uh, blogs here. 
The silly season ones were especially good, I remember. They were pretty funny. But man, here was the, yeah, some RCGP blogs. It was a comeback because I, I stopped uh, I stopped writing blogs for a while there. But it, yeah, like 2018, I stopped, I think. Here, I got a job in a grocery store uh, somewhere. Barry Baker, randomly. <laughs> oh my god oh i forgot about this do you remember this thing <laughs> when uh ty testman ran uh ty testman ran j concepts tires when he was sponsored by proline at neo that was a massive uh tri traction scandal my no, most popular blog who gets canned first? I remember people got mad at this. 2017, I wrote a blog about who, which top driver gets fired first. And well, Cody King won. And yeah, you know, he did. But anyway, uh, yeah, look, I, I tried finding it. I had this blog. Shit, what was it? where I made fun of the fact that X-Ray always use optimized in everything, right? So I think I made like a mock release of the Black Edition or one of the cars, and I just had everything optimized. But I can't find... I can't remember what the blog was. Anyway, it would have been funny to to read here. There's a lot of serious stuff here too, like testing and setup stuff. And some rants. Oh, well, I can't find that. Uh, we just have to going to do the, We're going to do the rant without that. Then explain the crying picture of you. Uh, do I have it on my laptop? Let's see. Where would I have it? Uh, do, does someone have the crying picture? You can pr probably find it on Google. Try traction was how I found out about JQ. That's funny. Crying picture. It's on a thumbnail on your YouTube. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, anyway, it's a picture of me, like, with my hands on my head, I think. And it looks like I'm crying. And then someone's, like, it almost looks like comforting me. Uh, it's uh, Christopher Svensson's dad, Gregor. It was in uh, 2008 at the Euros. And uh, I was having a terrible time. And then Phil from Neobuggy was there. And he was taking pictures. So right at that moment, I was sitting at the table there. And it was just... Like, I saw that he was coming to take a picture, so I just, like, fake cried to make a good picture. And it looks really good. Like, it really looks like I'm crying, and people think that I was actually crying and were, like, making fun of me, and I was just laughing because it was, like, a staged thing, but it, it just came out really good. And then at that time, who was it? Like, some someone made it into a meme. Like, there's... A, <laughs> Back then, there was that uh, viral video, uh, Two Girls, One Cup, which Greg Degani, of course, Degani, introduced me to. Um, yeah, so if you know, you know, Two Girls, One Cup, don't Google it or look it up. Uh, so someone made a meme where it was like two, two crying JQs in a cup. 
Uh, I can't remember what what the name of that was, and then multiple others also. So it just the JQ crying became a sort of meme thing. It was pretty funny at the time. Um. Oh yeah, I was supposed to do a quick rant and then quit. That's what I was supposed to do. Man, I'm a mess. Okay, so for the quick rant, we are going to go over vice championships. Okay, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to have to share my screen here. I prepared some images for you. Here we go. Okay. 30 seconds, you said. I don't know if I can do this in 30 seconds. Okay. So, I'm vice European champion and four trophies. I had a great weekend at Hoodie Arena. It's like, I won. I won. Bruno Coelho, RC driver at Hoodie Arena for Team X-Ray. Look how happy they are. They won. They are promoting this like they just won the European championship. The Vice European Championship. You cannot win second place. You lost you, by definition. You were racing and you crossed the line after the winner. You didn't win. Okay? So don't celebrate it like a win. You are not Vice European Champion. You lost. You lost the race. Okay? That's like me saying I'm... Vice, 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 champion. And I'm so stoked about my performance. I won this championship. If 27 other people have horrible accidents, then I'm going to be a European champion. I'm going to take that title over. Then I was already done. Like I got over it. But then this post popped up on my feed. And I had a bit of a problem with this because, again, it's the TQ and vice champion, but then also junior champion. I'm like, what the hell? So let's back up. First place champion, Kanas, European champion. Second place loser. Second, he lost to this guy. By definition, not a champion. You can't just add vice in front of it and say, Woohoo, we won! Woo! Let's promote, let's make a special edition of our car. Whoa, the 2022 Vice Champion Edition. No one does that. It's stupid. Is X-ray gonna release a vice champion edition of no? Stop this. It's ridiculous. First place equals champion. Look, Kanas is getting his award. I zoomed in. And it actually says first place on the trophy. That's because he's a champion. So, sorry, I drew this line a bit too long. He did TQ. But forget about that vice champion. TQ and second place. That's what this should say. Right? Then we had the junior issue. I zoomed in on that. I did some uh, CSI. I zoomed in. And you know what? The trophy that uh, Berkan won, it says first place junior. That's amazing. So actually, junior champion, forget about that shit, second place. Two second places, right? Forget about those championships. So here was my main point. It's just, come on, guys. You had a good race. You didn't win the championship. Respect the true champions. Don't try to steal some glory, you know? Didn't win shit. This time, it didn't happen. Accept and move on. You know, you know, a post that you could do instead, we go back here. You can still make a post like this. But instead of celebrating the great victory of vice European champ, instead of doing that, just make a post like, man, we had an epic race. It was awesome. Hats off to Kanas for winning the European Championship. That was amazing. I'm super proud of second place at the Euros. We fought hard. We did our best. 
and we'll come back next time stronger. You know, something like that. But not this shit. Someone's just scrolling. They're like, oh, X-Ray won the champ. No, they fucking didn't. Got second. And the, it, this isn't like this just happened one time and uh, I blew a gasket. No, this is always the same thing, right? Always with the vice championship. So it's a World Cup. Oh, it's a World Championship. Or um, when it comes to car design or new versions of the car or even accessories like, oh, this uh, hoodie genius uh, design department came up with this when it's a blatant copy. Like, don't take credit for something that you didn't do. You know? It's okay to copy others. It's okay to be heavily influenced by others. But then show some respect to them or at least don't own it as if it's your own. Like, oh, we came up with this great idea and made 27 prototypes and tested it and perfected it and optimized it. And this is what we came up with. And anyone with two brain cells to rub together can look, oh, you just copied that thing, you know? It's just like self-aggrandizing and uh, try, like taking like unfairly taking credit for stuff that pisses me off. That's what what uh, I was complaining about on Instagram and also on the podcast. And now here, someone requested a bit of a rant. You got it. So there we go. I don't know. What do you think? Com like, am I crazy or am I onto something? What do we call third place now? Thrice champion? What do they call the, like, second runner-up at, uh, is it second runner-up just, like, Miss Universe? I'm not crazy. That this really is a thing. So anyway, so my point with that blog I was looking for was that I actually got X-Ray to stop optimizing every damn thing. Keep the luxury. In Hoodie Arena, they have luxury showers and bathrooms. It really literally says that somewhere. That's fine. The optimized thing, it was getting a bit stale. So made fun of that. They stopped using it. I haven't checked lately if they've started using it again but they did stop using it uh for a while so now the next goal stop with the goddamn vice champions okay unless you're gonna release a new version of your car which is the vice championship uh edition then shut the hell up okay you heard me you're not a champion you lost give respect to the actual winner say your thank yous and move on Boom. Osovsky, yes, you are crazy. Thank you. <laughs> I agree. Respect the real champion. No one remembers the guy in second place besides the guy in second place. I couldn't agree with you more. I don't agree with you. <laughs> Wait, Barry Baker. Okay, Barry Baker in the house. Jesus Christ. I couldn't agree with you more. I don't agree much with you, JQ, but this is very true. I'm going to frame this comment, I think. Okay. That was it. Um, I, think we, I think we're good now. This was supposed to be like 45 minutes. It's been over two hours. Jesus Christ. I need to get out of here. Okay, let's just have one one final question. One final good question and then, then I'm out. Okay? Anything. Anything you want. Be now. Uh, you better you better think hard now. Get a good question. Wait until Fend is vice champion. He may change his tune. You know, can you imagine that Fend gets like second at the Worlds 
and then Horizon does some adverts <laughs> where they where they say that Fend is vice champion. Let's see what Barry says then. Okay, here it is. Here's the final question. What are the signs of a dead engine bearing? You know what you have to do. You're going to have to sign up to the Invisible Speed course and uh, go to the archives of the meeting videos, and there you'll find out. Or you could just watch uh, my YouTube channel for free tomorrow because I'm going to upload a highlights video of that meeting. And in that highlights video, you will hear... Bad front bearing, bad rear bearing. So there you go. There's a lot going on behind the scenes, and we're sharing some highlights with people, hopefully encouraging them to join us in the course, because the more the merrier. More people there are, uh, the better the content will be. And also, I'll be able to afford to buy more Ginger Joes, and uh, that means that the course will be much better. And I can finish all the content. Someone asked about that too. Yes, there are more videos coming and we will finish that damn course. Also translate it to Spanish and uh, French and do some on-road stuff. Hog Barry has already filmed uh, building 12 scale and 10 scale cars. Going to add those videos to the course too. We want free. Then uh, check the YouTube video tomorrow. So, JQ, am I a three-time Vice World Champion? Should I say that? Barry, you're on thin ice right now, okay? Don't start that shit. Imagine he goes, prints a shirt, Vice, three times Vice World Champion. <laughs> oh, my God. This sort of truth manipulation is taken from politics and is a way of today's modern word world. Yeah, it's uh, what's the word for that? They use it in uh, war also. Like they use terms that seem harmless, but is actually like collateral damage. You know, well, we killed a fucking wedding procession and a bunch of babies. Collateral damage. Collateral damage signs so doesn't sound too bad. Like we killed eleven babies. That sounds worse. There's a word for that. I can't think of it right now because it's late and I need to go. Uh, too many comments coming in. We have to take that next time. Okay. I'll be doing a live uh, a couple of weeks. World's warm up after world's warm up. Cool. See you guys. Bye bye.